Joining us is Catherine Kaminsky, Chief Research Strategist and Portfolio Manager at Alpha Simplex. Uh, what are you basing most of your uh, analysis on right now, Catherine? Is it the Fed, interest rates, oil, recession fears, uh, all of the above? I'd say all of the above, but I'll just tell you, I think everybody's taking a pause today to just sort of sort through what happened yesterday. Um, we think the markets went through a point of recognition. We have been saying higher for longer for quite some time. And what you saw yesterday was the market saying, wait a minute, the Fed is really saying this, yields have to go up, we need a disinverted curve, and we really saw that massive move in yields. And then, of course, later in the day, equity markets responded with fear, focused on inflation, focused on what does that mean for equities if we actually really do need to have higher for longer. There's a group of uh, individuals that come on that, that we have both sides, but some say that we've already we're too restrictive already. The lag uh, of the policy moves that the Fed's already made are going to become evident and that we may overshoot. And the risk now uh, is, is that we do, that the, the soft landing is, is much harder than people uh, are, are thinking right now. Are you in that camp or the camp that inflation is, uh, you, you know, that we have a lot more work to do? Well, I think I'm unfortunately I kind of see both sides of that argument because I think inflation is going to take a lot longer to come down, but I think this idea of a soft landing when you actually tighten policy that we're not going to have some sort of recession, some sort of pullback is a bit optimistic. We've been actually focused much more on the bond market and finding the bottom of the bond market first. And so I think this move this week is actually the first step of trying to figure out that next step. So I think trying to figure out what that ultimate goal is actually a much harder question, a long-term forecast. I think focusing on more what the next three to four months would be is actually more what investors need to start thinking about, because I think whether or not we're going to have a harder landing next year, uh, we need to first see the, the implications of this policy um, and how that that comes out first before we can actually make those long-term predictions. You kind of described the worst scenario is stagflation. That's, that's where we have a slowdown and inflation still stays high. Nothing's worse for financial assets. So does that, does that, does that push you to fixed income or to, to stay out of the, you think the stock market is vulnerable if that's the outcome? Well, that's what we've been worried about is stagflation. But I think the interesting part is you've actually seen growth estimates tick up recently. Um, and so that has actually died down a little bit in the space. Some people have been less worried about stagflation. Um, I think we're more worried that people are underestimating the impact of higher rates. Um, and this is why this week is particularly interesting. Um, people are starting to say, aha, you know, rate cuts are not coming as soon as we thought. We have to get used to having higher yields. We have to think about what that means for cash flows. We have to think about what this means for how we allocate in our portfolios. And when is it going to be a good time to buy bonds again? Um, and I think that's what we're thinking about is sort of when is the inflection point for bonds? Like, when do we actually see that in you know that that steeper yield curve where you have that duration premium that we all love to to kind of that we used to have um, before all of this occurred. It would be scary to get a real yield curve if if the two year stays where it is. Where would the ten year have to be? Ooh, it'd have to be a lot higher, and I think nobody really wants to think about that. So I think that's why cuts is a much easier way to think about how we'd have a steeper yield curve. I think from our perspective, we're probably going to see a disinversion, and we need to see how the data comes out and see it. I'm sure the Fed is also watching to see uh, what the next course of action is. So I think the next step is a disinverted curve and a wait and see to see what the impact right. of policy is over time. So